Okay, I'm going to take a little ride in the TBR7. Afterwards, I'm going to do a review. Probably just about a three or four mile ride, so it's not going to be long. Okay, here we are. It's a 2020 TBR7. I got this from Q9 Power Sports. $1,349 delivered to my house. I didn't think that was a bad, I, bad deal at all. So I've been reading a little bit about these Chinese dual sports. Um, never had one before. My bikes now, I got my dirt bikes are KTMs. Now if I wanted to, I could have pretty nice dual sport, expensive dual sport. But reading these reviews, it seems like a lot of people are doing a lot of things and they're having fun on these dual sports. So I thought, well, what the heck? So like I said, got it ordered. Um, I had to put the front tire on and handlebars. And essentially that was it. Uh, the bike started right up. Where leads me to my next thing? Of course, these are jetted super lean. And just about everybody either replaces the carburetor or puts the jet kit in there. I went ahead and I got a Makuni clone carb off e or of Amazon. I think it was about $22 a jet kit. And while I was there, I also ordered a 17 tooth front sprocket. Um, the carb swap probably taken 30 minutes altogether. You just loosen this clamp here and you got a little 10 millimeter nut on each side. The one on the left side, it takes the, you know, it takes a little bit to get the wrench in there. It's a little bit tight. Take it apart. I put a 115 main into it. I left everything else that came stock in the Makuni clone, and the bike ran really good. So no issues there. Other thing I've done, I got a bar, an oversized bar clamp, and I put the pro tapers on. I think it's kind of a nice touch. These were $12 from Amazon. So not really much of an investment at all. I thought it was well worth the money there. Um, other things I've done where you can't really see it now. The stock battery in here and these are okay. But I went ahead. I had an extra lithium lightweight battery laying around for one of my older KTMs. 
I put that in here, probably shaved off five pounds. And you could really tell the difference. It's right underneath the seat, so it made all the difference in the world. It really did. Um, mileage right now, I'm not really sure. The, the speedometer quit working. I'm not sure if I mean, the cable's all right. I'm, I'm not quite positive what's going on. Um, I got to dig into that a little bit more. But I'm, I'm assuming I got 100 to 150 miles. I possibly could have a little bit more. Um, other thing I've done, I, well, I can't really show you right now. Um, I put a couple holes in the air box, opened it up a little bit, and it seems to breathe a little bit better. I don't think that's necessary to do. Um, it ran pretty good after the car mobs, but it's just something extra you can do. Um, the time I've had this, and for what I've rode it, it's been really good. I don't really have any problems. Um, the bike starts up. It does what it's supposed to. It's not a real powerful bike. I think they rate them at 15 horsepower, maybe a little bit less. It'll cruise 55, 60 all day. The taller gearing, 65 is a bit of a stretch. But I'm 240 pounds, so if you're a lighter rider, I'm sure 70 is within your reach. But they're just not made for that. If you're going to go 50 to 60 miles an hour, it's a great bike for the back roads, hitting the trails. Differences between this and, let's say, a Yamaha or something. First thing, you got these really spindly forks. I mean, they're probably, what, 28 millimeter? Um, no, you're not going to be going with any big jumps. Not at all. They work. They do what they're supposed to for super light trails. They're fine. If you got on some whoop de doos or something, you're going you're gonna to be suffering. The shock, it has an awful lot of preload. But for what it is, you know, I mean, for $1,349, you really can't complain too much about it. Um, the bike runs, like I said, runs good, starts right up. Even when it's cold, starts right up. Not an issue at all. You do got to give these a little bit of throttle, even when you choke it. I usually give it a full choke for a few seconds, put it at the half choke, and it seems to run good. Now, this is a 2020 model. Apparently, the 2019 is when the rear disc came out, but some 2019s I know came with the drum brakes. This has got the disc. If, if you're getting one of these that has a drum, I think you should hold off to get the disc. So I, I think that's well worth it. It's the same price. I figure you might as well do that. Of course, these come with the rack. Um, these are designed after the um, Hawk. Differences being this has got the dual sport tires. Rim sizes are a little bit smaller. Um, seats the same. Side panels are the same. Engine is the same. 229 cc. The cases are altered a little bit, but that's basically about it. Speedometer, fuel gauge is, is all the same. This has actually got a gear indicator. I noticed the fuel gauge on this, it kind of goes crazy when it drops below half of a tank. It's just all over the place, but I'm not too worried. I know they got some aftermarket tanks and kind of contemplating whether to, or aftermarket um, speedometers, I'm kind of contemplating whether to get one of them or not. So we'll see. But yeah, pretty impressed for the price. I mean, I think it's well worth it. I mean, this is easily a bike that could probably sell for 2,500 bucks. The plastics are fairly thick. The tires are fairly good for what it is. I've heard pro and cons about the chain. Once the chain starts to stretch, I'll probably put a, um, an O-ring on there. Right now it's the stock chain with the 17 tooth front and it seems to do pretty good at that. I'll probably get a different shifter. I mean, that's a flimsy shifter. If you hit, you know, a chunk of wood or something, it's going to bend pretty easy. Um, starts, I say, it starts up all the time. No issues there whatsoever. So far, I'm pretty impressed. I mean, it's hard to believe for $1,349 you can get a brand new dual sport bike. Is it as good as a Jap bike? Hell no, it's not as good as a Jap bike. Is it as good as a used Jap bike with 40,000 miles? Probably. Probably. A lot of it depends, you know, type of care. You know, you can wear out any bike in a short time if you don't change your oil. And I've already changed the oil one time in this, too, just to be on the safe side. So that's pretty much it. Basically, uh, the exhaust, I know there's some people that have changed the exhaust. Um, I think I'm going to leave that. I like the sound of it. Um, it doesn't seem to limit the performance, so I'm probably just going to go with that. The disc brakes work really well. I'm really happy with it. 
So I'm gonna do a little bit more right here. Some people complained about the seat height, said I'm 6'2", so it hasn't been an issue at all. There you go, the 2020 TBR7.